What's going on guys, Hunter here with AM Electronics. Today we're gonna be going over adjustable fuel pressure regulators. We're gonna touch on why you need one, how to choose the right one, how to plumb your regulator, and how to set your base fuel pressure. So let's dive right into it. Often overlooked, the adjustable fuel pressure regulator is an essential part of any EFI system. Whether it's a port injection vehicle or a direct injection vehicle, in any application, Getting consistent pressure to the rail is essential for longevity and a reliable, predictable tune. Here at AEM, we have two offerings. We have our high cap model, 25-305BK, and we have Universal 25-302BK. Both of these are adaptable for a variety of applications, depending on what your goals are and how much adjustment you need. We'll dive into those differences later. In the box, you'll find your fuel pressure regulator bubble wrapped up, already assembled. We also include the mounting bracket and the four mounting screws, as well as a sticker and a link to your instructions and a legal disclaimer, plus five horsepower. Let's dive into the similarities and show you what's the same between these two. For these two, plumbing is gonna be the same. We have inlet ports on both sides that are threaded in 9 16 or dash six, make sure to use an ORB, O-ring boss fitting for a proper seal. On both of these units also, the return is a dash six ORB at the bottom. So you'll use a dash six or nine sixteenths O-ring boss fitting for your return line. Both of our fuel pressure regulator offerings have a five millimeter vacuum reference. So this is great for both NA and boosted applications. A one-to-one -one rising rate in your fuel pressure is essential for boosted applications. You wanna make sure your fuel is not fighting the additional air pressure as it's being injected. So for every one pound of boost, you're gonna need that fuel pressure to increase by another one pound so that your injection pressure stays consistent. Let's dive into the differences. And as you can see visually, the cap is a big part of that. With the 25-302, you will have an adjustment range between 20 and 100 PSI. So depending on your base fuel pressure and how much boost you're running, that may be adequate. However, for your high performance, high boost applications, you may need to up it to our high cap regulator. You have an adjustment range between 40 and 130 PSI. It allows you to up your base pressure while still having an adjustment range for that one-to-one -one increase on your boost pressure, which makes it great for high boost applications and when you're upping your initial injection pressure past a factory spec. Now let's touch on some of the accessories that you can pair with these units and another one of our fuel pressure regulator offerings. We have a number of Honda regulators that mount directly to the rails. These are perfect for your racing Hondas. This unit right here is a 25-300BK, also comes with a sticker, however this sticker plus 10 horsepower, wrapped up nicely in bubble wrap. These are perfect for your B-series, D-series, and H-series Honda racing motors. They'll mount directly to the Honda fuel rail or to the aftermarket AEM fuel rails that we've been making for about 20 years now. They'll feature either a straight outlet or a 90 degree outlet depending on the application and either a straight inlet or an offset inlet. Also, depending on the application, you'll wanna select the right one for your engine. We have four different variations that'll fit your setup so give us a call or check on our website so you get the right one. Each has a slightly different part number, so keep that in mind. The Honda Fuel Pressure Regulator also has all the same features of our 25-302BK, one-to-one -one rising rate on your vacuum and boost, perfect for your Honda racing engines. The Honda Fuel Pressure Regulator also comes with an outlet that's barbed fitting for the stock fuel line, but it's also threaded for a 9 16 or dash six ORB, so you can run it to your aftermarket AN lines. The fuel pressure regulator video would not be complete without going over some of our other fuel accessories, like our high flow dash 10 AN in and out fuel filter. This is ethanol, methanol compatible, pump gas compatible, and has a replaceable fuel filter element with the fuel filter element part numbers right on the body of it. So if you're out of the track and you need to replace your fuel filter, Pretty much any parts store will carry these and the part numbers are right on the unit. We also have a direct replacement fuel filter element that is a plug and play for your B, H and D series Hondas. Element comes right out, easily replaceable, nice billet enclosure, it's very clean, easy to maintain. It's also compatible with your ethanol, methanol, race gas and regular pump gas. Oh. I almost forgot. We also have your dash six ORB and dash eight ORB fitting for your fuel pressure regulators. So you can make your plumbing that much simpler. So these can thread right in. You can have your dash six or your dash eight if you need a larger feed, fitting both the feed and the return. So here we have our dash six AN to nine sixteenths. And then here we have our dash eight to nine sixteenths with the O-ring boss fitting for a perfect seal. 
A call we get very frequently are customers looking to rebuild their regulator because they've had it on their race car for a while and they just need a refresh. A lot of times after these regulators are rebuilt, we'll get them in because they're leaking or something like that. Most of the time it's because something was installed incorrectly or the diaphragm itself was pinched when it was reinstalled. So let's crack open one of these units. We can take a look at the machine work and show you how to rebuild the unit. The first step in rebuilding this fuel pressure regulator is to take out the six Allen head screws along the top. These are a 1 8 Allen, so we'll crack each of these. When you're taking out these screws, be mindful that there's a high pressure spring underneath pushing the cap off. So you want to loosen each screw just a little bit, much like you're attaching a wheel to a car. You'll do a star pattern when you're cranking it down. You'll do the same when you're removing these. I'll loosen one over here and one over here as I take it off, just to make sure that cap doesn't fly out at my face. So what I'm doing here actually, is I'm holding the regulator and I'm holding that spring down so it relieves the tension off these screws so I can take them out really quickly. And then just release the cap. Be mindful of the orientation of the cap so you can put it back exactly how it was. It can be placed in any orientation, but I like to keep the vacuum port on the opposite side of the mounting holes. You'll see our top cap comes off. Then we'll have our spring retainer that interfaces with our adjustment screw. We'll have the spring itself and we'll have the diaphragm. Now, note on this diaphragm, it's recessed into the groove on the regulator that's machined component. And on the opposite side of the diaphragm, we have the ball and then we have a return orifice inside. Here we have our 25392 fuel pressure regulator rebuild kit. This kit is applicable to our standard universal, our high cap, as well as our Honda fuel pressure regulator. They all utilize the same diaphragm. Let's jump into this and show you how that's replaced. You'll find a plastic bag, has a diaphragm, an O-ring, and a large return orifice, as well as some documentation and a link to the instructions. Here we have our return orifice. This is the large orifice, perfect for every application. We have an O-ring. This is specific to the Honda fuel pressure regulator, so in your standard universal regulators, you won't use this part. And then we have our ball seat diaphragm, and this unit will locate right in here. You'll want to make sure when you're replacing this that the ball goes down and you seat the edge of the diaphragm into the groove. A common problem we see is this diaphragm not being seated all the way into the groove, and the diaphragm's pinched when the screw and top cap are reapplied. That causes a leak, and is extremely dangerous. You don't want fuel leaking out of your regulator. I'm not gonna mount this diaphragm in right now because the one we pulled out is already factory fresh, so I'm gonna reassemble it with the diaphragm that came in it. However, now is a great opportunity to show off the interior of this fuel pressure regulator. The machining on this is impeccable and you don't see any burrs or hard edges or anything like that. That's a telltale sign it's counterfeit if you see a burr inside. You also wanna make sure that you're buying from an authorized retailer. While we do our best to knock down these counterfeiters, as soon as we see them, they're still out there. They're still sending counterfeit parts to customers. Let's reassemble this thing. Diaphragm goes in, edge seated into the groove, ball side down. Then your spring goes back in. Both sides are machined flat, so that unit could go in either way. Spring seat in on top, the seat then locates on top of the spring. And finally, our cap goes on in the same way it came off. And to make sure that my diaphragm isn't pinched, I'm going to use my hands to push down on this uh, top cap while I tighten in just a couple of screws and get them started. The key here is to make sure that the top cap goes on as flat as possible and you're not cranking down one side more than the other. That's where it leads to some issues and these things get pinched. Now that the screws are most of the way tightened down, we're going to go ahead and crank them down in a star pattern much like you would your lug nuts on your car. She's all rebuilt, sealed up, ready to go. Now we got Sam over on the engine stand. He's going to go over how to set your base fuel pressure as well as how to plumb your regulator. Hi everyone, Sam here with AEM Electronics and today we are going to be talking about fuel pressure regulators and all the ins and outs of setting them up and setting your pressure correctly. In the setup you can see our, our high cap fuel pressure regulator set up here with our fuel pressure sensor. Um, you definitely need to have either a fuel pressure gauge like one of our fuel pressure gauges, our X-series gauges or at least at minimum a typical analog gauge installed there so you set your pressure otherwise you have no idea where your pressure is. This is what we refer to as a return style system 
as opposed to a deadhead system. In a return style system, every component is, is plumbed in series, meaning the pump feeds through a filter, feeds through your rails, goes through the regulator, and then goes to the return. Whereas with a deadhead system, the rail is teed in to the pressurized portion of the fuel system. One thing I'd like to talk about with plumbing is the return line sizing. If you have a really big pump that flows a ton of fuel, your return line has to be large enough to return that fuel. There are scenarios where the pump can be so big that if your return line is too small, you'll have a, a false high pressure because the regulator is fully open and trying to return that fuel back. But the return line itself is too small that it's restricting that return, causing a false high base pressure. So that's one thing you guys want to consider that if you're trying to turn your pressure down and you're turning it, you know, you're turning it counterclockwise and it hits a spot where you're like, it just won't go down any further, I would check your return line sizing. Let's move on to actually setting the pressure on our test engine here. So the first step to setting fuel pressure is having fuel pressure in the first place, and that involves turning the pump on. In this application, we are lucky and we have an AM Infinity controlling this, so I can actually just turn on the pump manually. But for those of you at home who don't have that luxury, you can start the car, have the engine idling to set your pressure. Uh, one thing to make sure that you do is make sure that you actually disconnect the manifold reference line when setting this pressure. Um, because your pressure will rise and fall based off the, the vacuum or boost pressure being sent to the diaphragm. You are setting the base pressure. You want to make sure that this line is disconnected if you're running the engine while setting the pressure. So let's go ahead and turn that pump on. As you can see, I have fuel pressure set on my screen there. We're sitting at about 20 PSI, and I'm targeting around three bar fuel pressure, which is what most injectors are set for. You know, if you're dealing with an OEM ECU, each ECU is different uh, as far as the way they're, they're programmed for whatever base pressure. So you want to make sure that you, ma you match the base pressure for what your ECU is set for. With a standalone, we can set it to whatever we want. Normally, as I mentioned, you should probably dis you should disconnect the vacuum line going to the regulator, but since this engine's currently not running and I'm just running the pump by itself, we don't have any vacuum inside the manifold pulling that pressure down. So this is fine right now, but again, if you're doing this with the engine running, you wanna make sure that line is disconnected when setting your pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and unlock the lock nut, grab our 1 8th, 1 8th inch Allen wrench. So as you can see, as I turn the adjustment screw clockwise, the pressure starts to rise, and I'm gonna keep turning this till I get to my target pressure, which is three bar, or 43 and a half PSI. And that is just about where I want it. Once we have it where we want it, we'll lock it down using the lock nut, making sure that the adjustment screw doesn't turn while you're locking it down. And we are set and good to go. So now that we have our fuel pressure adjusted, this engine was calibrated for a fuel pressure of 43 and a half PSI. So we set the base pressure to 43 and a half PSI. And when we'll start it, you'll find, you'll see that the pressure is actually gonna be lower than what we set it to. The vacuum in the manifold is pulling that diaphragm up and allowing some of that fuel to go back so that our injection pressure, which is the difference between our manifold pressure and our fuel pressure, stays the same, which is our base pressure of three bar or 43 and a half pounds of fuel pressure. So let's go ahead and start this engine, see where our pressure is. Pump's on, ignition's on, hit the starter. Right now we're pulling a vacuum of about 10 PSI. If you take that 10 PSI away from our 43 that we have, that we originally set it at, that gives us 33. There's a little bit of rounding there, so we're, we're, our pressure is exactly where I would expect it to be. All right guys, so there you have it. If we missed anything that you would like to know more about, tell us in the comments. Aside from that, that's a wrap. Thank you guys, peace out.